Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 3 for March the 15th, 2020. We're still in Unit 1 entitled, God Requires Justice. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is getting what they deserve. Our devotional reading is taken from uh, Psalm uh, 130. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and we'll be studying today from uh, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 6 through 14. Our key verse reads, Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. That's taken from Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 12, from the NIV tra translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to recognize why injustice will be punished. Secondly, to appreciate the fairness of divine punishment of injustice. And then thirdly, to commit to following God's commandment to act with, it, with justice. We have three outlines that will be a part of our discussion today. The first outline is entitled, Woe to the Unscrupulous. Second outline is entitled, Woe to the Covetous. And the third outline is entitled, Woe to the Oppressors. And so I thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to share our Sunday School lesson with you. Uh, we started last week um, in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, uh, this minor prophet. Uh, and today we pick up another aspect of the lesson today of, of this prophecy. Uh, some of the issues that um, the prophet Habakkuk had um, during his time. Uh, so we just want to uh, touch on a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson. So the entire first chapter of Habakkuk focuses on the prophet's growing perplexity over the injustice uh, he was witnessing and what appeared to be God's insensitivity toward it. Uh, God's response to uh, Habakkuk's initial questions only troubled and appalled Habakkuk more. He could not understand how a holy God would choose a wicked people like the Babylonians to punish his chosen people. We'll stop right there. Uh, at the time of this writing, uh, the focus is on uh, Judah, uh, one of the tribes of Israel. Um, and the Lord uh, had previously warned Judah about uh, her sin. Uh, and so uh, this would be the southern kingdom uh, of Israel. And so the Lord raised up the Chaldeans or the Neo-Babylonians and they were essentially nomads. Uh, in, in other words, they they had no fixed habitation. Uh, and so uh, the Lord raised up this uh, group of individuals who uh, would judge Israel, who would uh, work at the Lord's um, wheel, if, you, if, if I could use that term. Uh, and it caused uh, the prophet at the time uh, to question God. Uh, these Chaldeans, uh, I want to go back over to the uh, first chapter of the book of Habakkuk, particularly verse 6, so we can get some perspective of, of uh, who these individuals were uh, that was causing such a, uh, an issue for the prophet Habakkuk. Uh, this is taken from uh, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, and God's talking here, For indeed I am raising up the Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation, which marches through the breadth of the earth to, to possess dwelling places uh, that are not theirs. And the Bible goes on to say they are terrible and dreadful their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves I'll stop right there uh, Habakkuk had a 
a theological crisis, a spiritual crisis, if you will, and it caused him to uh, uh, raise some questions, two questions he raised with God uh, about this from the first and the second chapter, the book of Habakkuk. The first question was, why does God respond to the wrong uh, and injustice in the land? Why does God not respond to the wrong and injustice in the land? God's answer was, he is about to respond by using Babylon as a tool of judgment. Habakkuk's second question is, why does God use the wicked Babylonians to punish those more righteous than themselves? Uh, and God's answer is, God has chosen this plan of action. The just person will live by faith in God. Woe to the unrighteous is where we are today. One of the things that uh, I want to move quickly to these outlines, and I hope that you will be prepared with uh, your Bible and and certainly be prepared to take some notes. But one of the things that um, uh, I want to make sure that we understand, uh, even in 2020, we have the same issues uh, today as the prophet Habakkuk had uh, during his reign or during his time or during his prophecy. Uh, we just don't know and it's very important that we temper uh, what we think we know or what we know uh, against what we really don't know and what I mean is that we do not understand the sovereignty of God uh, uh, we cannot question God we don't understand his motives uh, we don't understand why why he allows certain things to take place and so if we think about the history of the Chaldeans, uh, the Neo-Babylonians, even from the biblical standpoint as we just read to you from the first chapter of the book of Habakkuk, uh, these are some very wicked people. Uh, they have no remorse for what they do. Uh, keep in mind Habakkuk is watching all of this play out in front of him where people are dying uh, the Babylonians are taking over taking control uh, ruthlessly uh, oppressing individuals uh, these are God's people and so Habakkuk was questioning the holy character of God versus the wickedness of these Chaldeans and why he was not uh, he God was not responding and so that is the issue today and so uh, it's very important that we take into account God can do whatever he wants to do he can use whoever he wants to use and, and so when we read about uh, what God is raising up it just essentially means that he's, uh, he's going to allow something to take place um, under the backdrop of uh, uh, the Mosaic law that Judah would have had as a governing principle or principles uh, in the 28th and the 29th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy you can read that at your leisure but there were blessings f uh, for obedience uh, and there were curses for disobedience and one of the curses that the law drafted in the Mosaic law had to do with the enemies so uh, God was going to allow people uh, not of uh, the household of Israel uh, to come against them if they did not obey him. And so this was well founded. Uh, Israel, uh, Judah should have known uh, what to expect if they were not going to live according to the commandments that God had laid out through the Mosaic law. And so these things we have to understand uh, that even though God is raising up uh, uh, the, the Chaldeans or the Neo-Babylonians to punish Judah, what we're looking at today is God is going to punish the Chaldeans or the Neo-Babylonians for their role, uh, for their sinfulness. 
even though God allowed them, now God is coming back to punish them. And this is a <laughs> something that really would uh, rock your understanding because it doesn't uh, make sense to the naked eye. But in God's eye, it makes perfect sense. And so we want to get into this uh, 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 questioning here uh, and these answers that God is giving. Uh, I should note here that this word woe uh, that we are talking about today in, our, in all of the, the uh, outlines, this is a Hebrew word. It, it is, it's apparently uh, an interjection derived from uh, the funeral lament. Uh, sometimes rendered uh, alas uh, but it is often used in prophecies of judgment and so if you were to look this word up uh, this word woe up uh, it would tell you to speak to grief and it would speak to deep suffering uh, and so what God is essentially saying here that these individuals these Chaldeans these Neo-Babylonians are going to suffer grief for what they have done and they are going to suffer uh, they're going to suffer deeply so you might ask well why did God raise them up in the first place only to turn around and punish them well this is the sovereignty of God in play uh, and so we just have to be honest with ourselves and with people that we minister to when we run into things that we don't know we just need to say that we don't know uh... and so god is sovereign he is uh... uh over everything if you if you uh... go over to the doxology in romans chapter eleven uh... it will tell you that that uh... uh that god doesn't owe us anything even an explanation and so as as habakkuk uh, has asked God these questions he did not get the answers that he was expecting and so it is it exacerbated the situation for him not only to continue to look at the things that he was looking at but he had unrest in his spirit and I, I think all of us have been there uh, at some point in time and uh, this was a very important lesson for me personally because there are things that are uh, in my world going on that that I don't quite understand but I have to trust God uh, in the midst of it all though it does not make sense to me so let's move on uh, the first outline is entitled woe to the unscrupulous and this is taken from the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 6 through 8 I want to read this from the NIV translation uh, will not all of them taunt him with riddle and scorn saying woe to him uh, who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion how long must this go on verse 7 will not your creditors suddenly arise uh, will they not wake up and make you tremble then you will become their prey because you have plundered many nations the peoples who are left will plunder you for you have shed human blood you have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them so Habakkuk's second question and complaint to the law was why would God choose a wicked people like the Babylonians to punish Judah so he admitted that Judah was sinful and deserved punishment but not by a people more wicked than they so God's response to this complaint is in the form of a detailed song of woe in five stanzas uh, covering three verses each this is uh, verses 6 through 20 so it just goes on to talk about the tables are going to be turned and the victimized nations would suddenly revolt and get their share of the stolen goods so Babylon had uh, mercilessly shed blood and, and ravaged lands and cities however the spoiler uh, would become the spoiled led by the nations that had been attacked uh, but not destroyed so uh, Babylon would reap what had been sown you can look at Proverbs chapter 22 and 8 and also uh, Galatians chapter 6 
uh, verse 7. But it should be noted here that uh, the, the couple things that, that I gleaned from this lesson as I studied this was uh, one of the things that we have to do when we're dealing with unprincipled people, when we're dealing with evil, when we're dealing with uh, situations that just seem to uh, you know don't line up with God's truth we have to trust God in the midst of it uh, we have to trust God and, and we can't always know how God will respond to those who are doing evil and but but make no mistake uh, no one gets away from the sight of God uh, and sometimes uh, this is the the perseverance that we need uh, and this is what the, uh, God is challenging uh, the prophet, uh, somebody has, that has been tagged to uh, deliver a message, but, but it's troubling him. He's been tagged to speak on behalf of God, but he doesn't understand God. Uh, and, and so, but he has to speak anyway. And so we have to continue to stand. And, and the theme of the book of, uh, of Habakkuk is the just shall live by faith. Uh, we have to continue to live by our faith uh, in the face. And that is the test. Uh, that is the trial, if you will. Uh, that's what shakes us. Uh, I want to give you also, we won't have time to get over there today, but I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, verses 35 through 39. I also want you to look at uh, Romans chapter 8 uh, verses 24 and 25 and as you read particularly in the book of Romans uh, what we want to be able to do as Christians is draw from our position in the body of Christ and sometimes when we're going through things we have to draw from what we understand uh, 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 from God's word and we want to be able to draw from a place of strength that we are sure about what, who God is and what God is going to do and so even though uh, 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 the prophet doesn't understand what's happening God is saying these individuals have some grief coming they have some suffering coming uh, I know they are unprincipled and and so uh, sometimes it looks like the evil individuals are just getting away with murder to coin a phrase uh, that they, they just cannot be stopped and it's just relentless to things that they do and and nobody seems to care and nobody seems to be speaking out and it looks like they have just been getting away for so long telling lies and 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 sometimes uh not so much literal killing but killing one another's influence these things happen and we see these things happening in our world today but we have to look to the future we have to look to the promises of god we have to look ahead uh, that no one will escape and this is what god is laying out for this prophet here uh, essentially saying to him I see what's going on I'm at the helm I'm, I'm allowing things just as we read to you in Habakkuk chapter 1 uh, verse 6 I know who's doing what but in this lesson today God is saying woe uh, to these unscrupulous unprincipled individuals question here in the quarterly is what are some modern examples of unscrupulous behavior in corporate America and the social arena. We just talked about that. That is so much injustice in the world. It just seems like uh, the righteous can't get a fair shake. It just seems like uh, uh, we want to give up from doing right because it doesn't seem to pan out. Nobody recognizes uh, the good things. They're, they're just focusing on doing something evil but we have to continue to stand our ground and this is what uh, the prophet Habakkuk did after he questioned God he said I'm going to stand on my rampart here and I'm going to see what God has to say to me and guess what God answers him and so uh, God tells him things that 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 don't uh, always solve what he's believing or seeing but nevertheless God is answering him 
and essentially telling him just stay the course just stay the course this had to happen to Judah uh, 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 it didn't matter necessarily who the enemy was they were disobeying God and so God used some individuals and sometimes uh, I shared this with my Sunday school class last week as we were talking about this it's important when things are happening in our lives we we may be experiencing something that God is allowing to put us in our place to show us that's not what he expects of us and though you pray about that situation that it might be lifted God is allowing that thing to shape you in the way that he wants you to be and this is what is happening to Judah uh, God is shaping their character God is shaping their conduct through adversity God is shaping uh, uh, obedience within them uh, that they would live up to the covenant obligations that was given to them uh, through Moses and so sometimes uh, have you ever noticed this in your life that a trial will make you pray when you're going through situations at the hands of evil individuals have you ever found that that would make you pray that would make you cry out to the Lord that that would make you surrender in a, in a, in a more profound way than you would had that trial not taken place in your life so we just have to pay attention and Judah had not been paying attention to the warning signs that they had been given through the prophets that God was raising up uh, this prophet Habakkuk uh, was a contemporary with the prophet Jeremiah and so Jeremiah spoke quite extensively uh, 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 to Judah uh, about their doings that God was not pleased with them uh, but they wouldn't stop and so sometimes when we won't stop the things that God has given us to do or we won't even start the things that God has told us to do God has a way of using situations and people to bring us to where he wants us to be he'll close doors and that'll make you go into the direction that he wants you to go or he will raise up somebody who will buffet you and it will cause you to to come to him more often you know so there are lots of things that we just have to be a uh, spiritually mindful of uh, and this is something that Judah should have expected based on the law I hope you understand that a second outline is entitled Woe to the Covetous and this is taken from Habakkuk chapter uh, 2 verses 9 uh, through 11 and again from the NIV translation Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain setting his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin verse 10 you have plotted the ruin of many peoples shaming your own house and forfeiting your life the stones of the wall will cry out and the beams of the woodwork will echo it this is profound here and God is saying uh, uh, these individuals that had an ordinate desire uh, inordinate desire to uh, for others possessions uh, uh, these un uh, uh, unprincipled uh, uh, individuals they wanted uh, uh, what everybody else had and they did anything and everything that they could uh, they were craving uh, for possessions and we have to watch that spirit and we know individuals like this who would be willing to step over anyone to get what they want and 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 you know I, I, I've told uh, said this to people over the years who have uh, acquired authority I have always reminded them to be yourself uh, don't try to God has given you a position of authority God has given you allowed you to be in a, partic a particular position but don't step over people and on people so you could put your house on high and this is what God is warning here and saying suffering to him who builds his house by unjust gain God knows how we got the things that we got God knows if we stole those things or if we work for those things or if we 
uh, 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 messed over someone's life, if I can say it like that, uh, just to get ahead. God knows all of those things. And so, uh, and sometimes this is how people, when we want what they have, we don't know how and what means they use to get the things uh, that they have. We just want what they have, but and then we sell ourselves out to look like them and to be like them. And so, these nomads in this context here, they had no place of their own. They had nothing. And so they acquired and they looked upon Judah and what they had and they took what Judah had. They, 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 they overstepped, if you will. And so uh, uh, God says you have plotted the ruin of many people. And we see that going on today uh, uh, on a mass scale where people are just... Uh, plotting and, and, and just lying and, and doing everything they can to get ahead to look like they are somebody and to, to be on a certain level or platform. But God knows about it. And so we just have to be careful. And so God is saying here, just because you think you uh, 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 have set your nest on high, you think you're going to escape, but you're not. God is saying here the stones of the wall will cry out and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. And so it's going to collapse. You're not going to be able to get ahead and stay ahead on the backs of others. And we have to be careful in society today. We have poor alongside of, of us. We have people who are uh, barely able to take care of themselves and how dare us take advantage of them because they are down how dare we take advantage of them uh, uh, kick them while they're struggling uh, uh, and so we have to be careful with that it's best to walk away from it uh, you know I could tell you uh, over the years I've been offered things uh, uh, quote unquote under the table and I didn't accept it. I, I didn't feel good about that. And so I, I said, no, thank you. I didn't accept that. And so we have to be careful here. So ambition is a positive attitude uh, when its purpose is to gain uh, in order to be a blessing to others. But when this attitude is self-centered, it is nothing more than covetousness. So the Babylonians were not only unscrupulous, uh, they be, uh, they also exhibited a whole uh, unholy ambition or covetousness. So the Babylonians used uh, what they plundered for their own exaltation. They used illegal gain to build a world uh, empire that dwarfed other nations. So uh, uh, the wealth and power they gained they they gained. Uh, gave them a false security uh, 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 like it, like that of an eagle building an inaccessible nest high on a mountainside. And so this spirit is, is spoken out of uh, throughout the scripture. And I hope that you will write these down as I give them to you to take a look at this spirit of covetousness. Uh, Exodus 20 and 17, uh, Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5 uh, the gospel of Luke chapter 12 verses 15 uh, through 21 also 1st Timothy chapter uh, 6 verses 5 through 11 uh, James chapter uh, 4 verse 2 and I also want to give you Galatians chapter 5 uh, verses 19 through 21 so it is a self-destructive sin against God uh, but he provides the remedy for it in his word. Set your mind on the things above and not on the things that are on the earth. That's Colossians chapter 3 uh, verse 2. So the surest foundation is developing and maintaining an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And some of these individuals that we see and that we uh, talk about uh, we watch in society day, today. We want to be. We want to mimic them. We want a lifestyle like them. Uh, have no relationship with God, and so on the outside it may look like they are rich, but on the inside they are poor. They are poor in spirit. They are poor in relationship with God. They have no fellowship, and so at some point in time, uh, when God calls into question. 
uh, as we were looking in uh, uh, Luke chapter 12, when it comes time that our soul is required of us, then where do you think our possessions would go? Do you think you can take them with you? Do you think you brought something into this world and you're going to take those things out of this world? Uh, that is not the truth. And so we have to be careful uh, that is nothing wrong in having things. Just hear me clearly on this. There's nothing wrong with having money, having wealth, having things. But we have to make sure that these things don't become our God, uh, that they become the, the seat of our affection, that we move God from the center of our lives and place these things that represent idols in front of him. Uh, and then the second point I would like to make is that we need to make sure that w these things are not a part of your gotten gain. Uh, that we didn't uh, harm anybody to get ahead. That we didn't ruin anybody's life uh, uh, to be something and to have something. These are the things that uh, these individuals were doing. These Neo-Babylonians, the Chaldeans, uh, those words are used interchangeably. Uh, but God is saying here, you're not going to get away with it. And so uh, the question here is, what is the root cause of covetousness and how can it be avoided? So I just want to make sure that we are content. That's a word you don't hear too much about uh, in gospel preaching today. We're always teaching about and preaching about what to get. Uh, but at some point in time when God doesn't give us the things that we, uh, 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 that we would pray about, then sometimes we get in trouble when we try to supplement uh, uh, our income, if you will, or we try to supplement the things that we don't have by taking advantage of others that we might obtain. This is something that uh, Paul talked about with Timothy. I gave you First Timothy chapter 6. All of that is good uh, because we wander away from the faith and we, we injure ourselves, we pierce ourselves, uh, and sometimes we don't recover because we don't have a spirit of contentment. We're not satisfied with what God has given us. We're not satisfied with where we are. And so we seek to get ahead by using uh, other means, ungodly means, to, to take advantage of individuals. So the root cause of this is a failure to, con to be content. And, and if we want to avoid these kinds of things, we have to pray. Uh, you have to pray for yourself. I have to pray for myself that I don't overreach, that I don't overstep, that I don't uh, take advantage of people to get ahead. And then I have to surrender uh, myself to God so he can rework me in a way that I'll stay down, I'll stay humble. Uh, and then as I stay humble, uh, then God, as Peter says, he in due time, he will raise you or he will uh, put you where he would want you to be. Uh, but uh, the third outline is entitled, Woe to the Oppressors. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 12 through 14, again from the NIV translation. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Uh, verse 13, has not the uh, uh, Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? Verse 14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water, the waters cover the sea. This is something that we should long to see, that we should await to see how God brings this about where people acknowledge God uh, and not their things. Uh, that people recognize the almighty God and understand his word in a way uh, that it brings, uh, this is something that jumped out at me at the lesson uh, it brings God glory uh, we live in a culture now where we want the glory we want to be recognized for everything that we do we want our names to, to blink in lights and we want to be glorified for who we think we are we uh, have amassed positions and credentials and we want to be respected there's nothing wrong with those things but but I will tell you this God will not share his glory with another and so woe to those individuals who uh, uh, who build a city with bloodshed we are literally stepping over people ruining lives we are uh, 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 literally killing individuals to get ahead uh, this is something that uh, 
the Babylonians were doing. They were uh, causing so much bloodshed uh, to establish themselves. Uh, this was injustice, right? And so God sometimes gives us a position and authority to see if we're going to mete out in, uh, justice, if we're going to be fair with individuals and so we have to do that we have to exhibit that we have a spirit of equity that we have a mind to uh, to make sure that everybody uh, is taken care of that we have a spirit and sometimes when we don't exhibit that characteristic we don't stay in those positions long uh, and so we have to be careful with that so verse 13 asks a very important question has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire. So all of those things that you did, uh, that we do and that we see individuals do to get ahead, it, it, it comes to naught. It, it burns up just like in a fire. And so it becomes fuel, if you will. Uh, it, it just, it, it, it just uh, goes up into smoke. Uh, it comes to nothing. In other words, all of the things that we do to get ahead and then God blows on it and then you have nothing and so uh, this uh, God is saying here the Almighty determined you know and this means that God understands um, he is omnipresent he's omniscient he's omnipotent he understands uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it and if he makes a determination that you have done things that are uh, uh, at odds with who he is uh, and 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 uh, uh, what he has done, uh, that as, as though you are uh, above him, then you can expect God to confront you uh, on that those issues. And I would also make the men make mention here that one of the things that Habakkuk was charged to do, and I I want to lift this uh, as we talk about this. Uh, we have to be able to wait on God and we have to be able to understand that God is speaking to us for matters that uh, uh, of his own choosing will occur in his own time uh, I want you to look at Isaiah uh, I want to go over there if I have time real quick here and read this from the 55th uh, chapter of the book of Isaiah uh, and I want to go down to verse 10. You've seen this many times, but it's relevant to our discussion today as we talk about uh, who God is and how powerful his word is and how uh, important it is that we stand on what God says. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. The Bible says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, uh, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And so it's important to understand that if God sends a word and as he is sending this word about this woe that is coming up on uh, on these uh, Chaldeans, these Neo-Babylonians, there is no escape. That word is gone out. God says woe unto them. That, that's it. That's sovereignty. That, that, that's something that's not going to change. If you prayed a thousand years, you wouldn't be able to change uh, God's mind. He spoke it out and it's going to accomplish the things that he set out but another thing that 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 God tagged Habakkuk in doing and this goes back to the second chapter uh, was not a part of our lesson but it's relevant he says uh, write the vision write what I am revealing to you right make it plain in order that it might be preserved and transmitted so this is the reason why God wants him to to record this so that he may run who reads it uh, it speaks to uh, perhaps uh, Habakkuk actually wrote an, an oracle on large tablets indicating that Habakkuk's prophecy was to be publicized right 
So either the writing was to be so clear that a courier could run with it uh, the tablets, uh, run with the tablets to read them, uh, or that its clarity should enable a passerby to read without difficulty. I just want to make mention here of the the importance of telling people the truth. This is something that Habakkuk had to do, right? Even though it's uncomfortable, even though he doesn't understand. And we, this is another way that we undermine people. We lie. We don't tell them the truth. We don't preach the things that God tells us to preach. We preach the things that people want to hear. Uh, we, uh, as Paul talks to Timothy about uh, those teachers who uh, uh, want to uh, have their ears tickled. Uh, we want to be able to tell people what they like to hear so they will applaud us. But is that what God told you to tell them? So we owe one another the truth. And when we don't speak out, when we don't share what God has said, we cause people, cause people to be lost cause people not to be exposed to the salvation of Jesus Christ uh, that has been brought through the cross and through the shedding of his blood through the crucifixion God wants people to be saved and in order for them to be saved we have to tell men the truth and so this is something that uh, uh, this is a very unpopular message this won't get you a lot of amen when you're talking about woe when you're talking about hardship, when you're talking about grief coming up on individuals, this 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 will get you thrown out of the synagogue, if you will. But uh, but nevertheless, God is saying this is what's going to happen. So God is saying you got to write this down. You got to make it clear. You got to make it plain. You got to make sure that everybody understands this. I want you to preach it in a, on a way on a level that is clear. Make it plain. And so uh, we don't want to confuse people about the messages of God. Tell men the truth. That's our charge today, uh, to deliver the message. And so the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, which we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's on the table. God said it uh, even in John 3. Jesus talked about, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish. It's on the table if we don't adhere to the messages that God have sent to us. The historical account is clear even from the prophecy today. Judah was in trouble because they failed to hear. And the reason why judgment came is because of failure to hear. Failure to respond, failure to heed, failure to listen to the things that God has said. So we have to be careful about telling men the truth. Last question here in the quarterly. What are some practical ways in which your congregation can confront and challenge a oppressive and injustice in your community? So we have to live God's word. We have to practice godly principles. And as I just stated, we have to speak the truth to power, the powers of evil, we, the powers of 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 of, uh, of uh, destruction of of men's lives. We have to tell the truth. We have to warn our brothers and sisters uh, that that's not the way to go. That's not what you want to be a part of. Don't don't participate in that. Don't do that. Don't don't harm anyone because that word will come back on you. And so this is something that uh, uh, God had. Uh, charge to Becca to do. I, I hope that you will read the entire book. It's only three chapters, but it's 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 a faithful uh, part of of our society society today uh, that we need so desperately. We need the truth, uh, and we need to speak out against these things that are going wrong in our society. We need to warn our brothers and sisters that God is looking at us. We need to warn one another that there is a future coming. Uh, where no evil is going to dwell. There's a future coming uh, where the liar won't be present. God is going to clear it out. And the only thing that will prevail is the word of God and the righteousness thereof. Our closing prayer, Father, help us work with you to address injustice in your world by 
consistently obeying your command to act with justice in all areas of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.